this video we will still be on the linear properties of the integral. So last time we mentioned the fact that if f was Riemann integrable on alpha and g was also Riemann integrable on alpha on a certain interval a b then um, c1 f plus c2 g was also Riemann integrable uh, on the same interval a b so this time um, I'm going to run quickly f um, on this theorem. If f is in is Riemann um, on alpha, and f the same function this time, okay, is also Riemann integrable on beta on a certain interval a b, then f is also Riemann integrable c1 alpha plus c2 beta on a b of course for any two constants c1 and c2 and we write this um, this way um, from a to b f d c1 alpha plus c2 beta equals so this will be c1 from a to b f d alpha plus c2 from a to b f d beta okay so this is very similar to the, the previous uh, theorem, okay? And the proof is uh, very similar too. And you can easily do that at home. If you have any problems, please let me know. But it's so just watch a couple of times the previous video and you will do this um, easily. Now... Um, so still on the linear properties of the integral, we saw these two last theorems, and now we are going to see a very important theorem here. So I'm going to divide this page here. Um, We are going to assume uh, that C is in the close and bounded interval AB. Okay, so for a close and bounded interval AB, we are going to take an, a point C in AB. Um, if Two or three. Um, this is a funny way of saying this. Two of the three uh, integrals exist. Then the third exists. I don't like this way of uh, exists. Uh, what I mean is, if a function f is Riemann integrable from a to c, so from a to c, f d alpha, if it is Riemann integrable from a to c, and Riemann integrable from c to b, from c to b, f the same function, of course, then we say the function is Riemann integrable from a to b f d alpha. This is obvious. So if two of if two of these three integrals, if two of these three integrals exist, then the third exists, this one exists. Okay, so if a function 
is Riemann integrable from A to C and then from C to B okay so the function is integrable from A to B a very very important theorem that I'm going to prove now okay uh, proof um, let's take um, a partition so P will be a partition on AB. I take, I'm going to take P a partition on AB. And we are going to take um, so such that C is a point in the partition. Okay? Now, let P prime be the partition intersected with AC. Okay, so the the, the inter P prime will be AC. So it will be AC intersected with P. Um, so this is P, right? So the intersection of AC and P. P intersecting, um, sorry, P intersecting AC equals AC, obviously. Okay, so we are going to call this uh, partition AC, we are going to call it P prime. And we are going to pick another one, P prime prime. Um, that will be P intersected with CB, right? With CB. Right, let me draw a quick thing here. AB, so this will be C. So P prime will be the partition from A to C. It will be all P, all P intersected with AC. And P prime prime will be the intersection of all P with CB, so it will be CB, obviously. Okay. So P prime, P prime, before I forget, P prime equals AC, closed and bounded interval, P prime prime equals CB. Okay? So the Riemann still sums for these partitions are connected by this equation. So the sum, the Riemann sum of the partition, the function f, I'm, somewhere on the way I have to drop this alpha, okay, uh, it will be equal to the sum of the Riemann sum of partition prime according to function f plus the sum of partition p prime prime f alpha. Okay. So we are going to assume that the integral ac of function f uh, exists and we are going also to assume that the function from c to b, the integral from c to b of the function f, the alpha also exists. Also. Now we are going to pick a positive epsilon. Okay. So we are going to say that there is a there is a particular p prime partition. I'm going to call it p prime epsilon of AC such that the Riemann sum of P prime the function minus AC minus the integral from A to C F the alpha modulo will be less than epsilon. 
Okay, but so epsilon will be a small number, okay? A positive small number. I'm going to get a, um, a smaller number, epsilon over 2. Okay, this will be true. And of course, for this is true for uh, p prime finer than p prime epsilon. Okay, or p prime finer than p prime epsilon. Um, and uh, there will be also another partition, p prime prime epsilon. This time of CB, right? I hope I did not get it wrong. Um, such that, and we are going to say the same, the module of p prime prime of the function minus the integral, this time from c to b, right? From c to b, f d alpha, will be smaller than a positive small number, but I'm going to get an even smaller number. Uh, here it is for p prime prime. p prime prime has to be finer than p prime prime epsilon. Okay? So p prime prime will be finer than p prime prime epsilon. Okay. Um, then, so partition epsilon. Now I'm going to pick, I'm going to call to p prime epsilon. Remember the first one, I, uh, my first choice here, p prime epsilon um, union with um, so p prime epsilon union to p prime prime epsilon. So I'm going to call p epsilon the union of p prime epsilon with p prime prime epsilon. Uh, and this, this of course, is a uh, partition of AB. Well, there is no doubt about it. Okay, but this partition has a particular um, characteristic. It's a partition of AB such that P is finer than P epsilon. So P is finer than P epsilon. Okay? P is finer than P epsilon. Uh, and this implies, of course, that P prime is also finer than P prime epsilon. Uh, and um, P prime prime will also be finer than p prime prime epsilon. I hope all this makes sense for you. Uh, so p is finer than p epsilon. Okay, just follow all from this. So p will be finer than p epsilon and p epsilon will be those two. Okay. Uh, so now we can combine all these results and we are going to obtain a, a nice inequality here. So I'm going to write it right now. So S of a function, the Riemann sum of the function, minus ACF the alpha minus, so AC now is CB, right? CB F of D alpha will be smaller than this epsilon over 2 plus this epsilon over 2. So epsilon half, half of epsilon plus half of, of epsilon will be 
epsilon. Okay, so this proves that the integral of a, b, f, d alpha exists and is equal to a, c, f, d alpha plus b, c, f, d alpha. Uh, so this is really a, a very easy argument. Now, here we have to be careful with one thing. Um, we have this interval, okay, from A to B, and we decided to make a partition of, on C. Of course, we could make a, make a partition on C and then another one on D. And of course, that if, if the function is Riemann integrable on A, B, so it will be, uh, if it is Riemann integrable on A, C, and it is Riemann integrable on C, D, and Riemann integrable from D to B, then the, in, the, the, the integral from A to B to be equal from the integral from A to C, C to D, D to B. Okay? And you can do another partition, you see, and do the sum again. And this is very uh, easy to prove. You, you, you can prove this using induction. Okay? For those interested, they, they could do this at home. Okay? And and send me to, to check if it is okay. Um, or I can do that on another video if you guys want. Okay, really uh, easy to check. The, the question is, um, so for any decomposition of the interval AB, it's easy to prove the same, uh, the same result. But what we have to be careful here is that the decomposition has to be in any number of sub-intervals. Yes, any number of subintervals, but it has to be a finite number of subintervals. Okay, this is true, easily proved by induction that this is true for any finite number of subintervals. Okay, and I also want to say another thing, uh, and I'm not going to get into that, I don't want this video to get very long, but um, if you say uh, integral from A to B of F exists uh, uh, sorry, if you say if you know um, no, okay, I'm going to use B again sorry, I'm going to start again okay, if you know that the integral from a to B exists, you see, and so A to B will be this interval, and then you have <coughs> you have a C in A B, okay. So if you know that uh, function f is Riemann integrable on the interval A to B, it is true. It is true that you can say uh, this implies that Riemann, uh, that, that the function is Riemann integrable on interval A to C, for C in this interval. But the, the, the previous proof is not the proof for this. This is true. We will see this when we, will, when we get into... Um, integrations of bounded variation, etc. But the previous theorem or the previous proof is not the proof for this, although this is true, okay?